Sometimes we don't really care what the value of an improper integral is. We just want to know whether it's finite or infinite, whether it converges or diverges. In this situation, the comparison theorem can be very handy. The comparison theorem can allow us to determine if an integral converges or diverges without actually having to evaluate the integral. Instead, by comparing it to the integral of a function that we know converges or diverges. So suppose that g of x and f of x are both positive valued functions. They're both greater than zero for all x's on the interval a, b. And let's suppose also that g of x is less than f of x on that interval a, b. Here, a or b could be infinity or negative infinity. So in the picture, we'll call this blue function g of x and the orange function f of x. And let's consider the interval from 1 to infinity where g of x is less than f of x, and both of them are bigger than 0. Now if we already know that the integral of f of x on this interval converges to a finite number, then g of x, which is less than f of x, also has to converge to a finite number. So if the integral of f of x converges, then g of x converges. If we turn this around, we can say that if g of x diverges, so it doesn't converge to a finite number, then f of x has to diverge also. So in the situation where the integral of the bigger function converges, or the integral of the smaller function diverges, then we can make some conclusions about the integral of the other function. But you have to be a little careful about this, because if instead the integral of the bigger function diverges, then we really can't make any conclusions at all about the integral of the smaller function. It could also diverge, or it could be small enough to converge as an integral. Similarly, if the integral of the smaller function converges, then we really just don't know anything about the integral of the bigger function. It could converge or it could diverge. Let's look at an example. Suppose we want to find out if the integral from 2 to infinity of 2 plus sine x over square root of x dx converges or diverges. Instead of trying to evaluate it, which could get tricky because of the sine x and the square root of x in here, I'm going to just try to compare it to something that I know converges or diverges. The first thing that I notice is that sine of x is bounded. It's always between 1 and negative 1. And that means that the numerator, 2 plus sine x, is always going to be in between 3 and 1. Therefore, the function 2 plus sine x over square root of x is going to be between 3 over square root of x and 1 over square root of x. Here's the general idea of the picture. Now the comparison theorem tells us that if our function is less than a function whose integral converges, then the integral of our function will converge. And if our function is greater than a function whose integral diverges, then the integral of our function will diverge. So which one of these two inequalities we want to use depends on what happens to the integral of these functions on the ends. Now we know that the integral of 1 over the square root of x dx from 2 to infinity has to diverge. That's because this is a p function where p is equal to 1 half, which is less than 1. The integral from 2 to infinity of 3 over the square root of x dx also diverges since it's just 3 times the other integral. So if we want to compare our function to a function whose integral diverges, it had better be bigger than that divergent integral in order to get any useful information out of it. Being less than a function whose integral diverges doesn't tell us anything. So we need to focus on this inequality. And now we can say that since the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over the square root of x dx diverges by the p-test, the integral of our function also diverges by the comparison test. In this video, 
we saw that if we have two positive functions and one function is always less than or equal to the other function on an interval, then if the smaller function's integral diverges, the bigger function's integral also has to diverge. And if the bigger function's integral converges, the smaller function's integral also has to converge. That's the comparison theorem.